If you've been following my playlist on fixed income, you know that when we say interest rate, we're not being very specific. It's a general risk factor that begs the question, which interest rate? In this video, I'll use Tuckman's Table 2.1, Concepts that are assigned to FRM candidates, to coordinate or show how the different interest rate factors specifically are coordinated. And so we do need to observe here the swap rate curve. So that'll be the input assumption, the swap rate curve, but it's the only input assumption. Then given that, I'll show you specifically how we extract the discount factors. That's the discount function, how we extract the spot rate curve, also called the zero rate curve, how we infer from that the forward rate curve. And finally, something to think about, I'll ask, okay, where is this, where is the par rate or par yield curve in all of this? So let's take a look. On the right here, I've got Tuckman's table 2.1. The term structure goes out two and a half years, and we have each of these interest rate factors, swap rate, discount factor, spot rate, and forward rate. Although keep in mind, we're going to observe the swap rate. That's what the market gives us this information, and we only need the swap rates in order to infer the discount factor, spot rate, and forward rate. So the same values in this table I've graphed here in this plot just so we can visually see what the assumption is. And in orange are the swap rates here. You can see it's upward sloping. The spot rates are in dotted red. I just selected dotted red. And you can see how visually they look to be almost the same. Although you can see in the values here, swap rate compared to spot rates, they are not the same in terms of interest rates, nor do we expect the values to be identical. When the swap rate is upward sloping, the spot rate you can see will tend to be a little bit higher. And then the forward rate here, I get graphed in blue, and you can see, you probably already know this, if the spot rate curve is upward sloping, then the forward rate curve is going to be even more steeply upward sloping. Okay, so this is the assumption set. And then if I go to the next page, I have just, uh, I've just transposed the timeline to make it a little easier, right? So now the uh, mature year, the, the term structure goes to the right, six months to two and a half years. And then I have a swap rate here, highlighted in yellow, because again, that's our assumption. That's what we observe in the marketplace. And then the other values are inferred. So starting with the discount factors, each of these discount factors is part of the discount function. I actually covered this specifically, how to bootstrap these discount factors in an earlier video. But let's just take the one-year a discount factor. We're given the swap rates and we want a one-year discount factor. So we need to go back to the definition here of this swap rate, that this 0.8750%. What that means is that if I take a coupon, 8, 0.8750%, right? This is all semi-annual, so I'm going to do a lot of dividing by two. If I take that coupon, that's what I get in six months. I multiply that by the six month discount factor. That gives me the present value of the coupon to be received in six months. Then I need to add the cash flow in one year. If I'm doing a if I'm doing a one year discount factor based on the one year swap rate, that means I need to include the principal. So in one year, it's one plus that same. 8750% uh, divided by 2. And that's going to be multiplied by the one-year discount factor so that I have, in computing the one-year discount factor based on the one-year swap rate, that's one-year swap rate means I have a cash flow in six months that I discount to get the present value. I have a cash flow in one year that includes the PAR, discount at one year, adding those together by definition of the swap rate should get me 1.0. Oh. 
Now, what I have done here is we could we could put the hundred dollars in. We could we could say we could multiply this term by hundred dollars, multiply this term by hundred dollars, and let it equal a hundred dollars, so that we're on a dollars by dollars basis. But I'm just letting the one hundred dollars that's implicit there cancel through in all three terms, dividing it out, so that to get this one year discount factor, I need the six month discount factor, but that's, I covered that in a previous video. We bootstrap that. We start with the six month and we build it out. So I would already have it. That means I can solve for, you can see here, this one year discount factor is just going to be equal to 1.0. I'm going to divide by, I'm going to subtract, sorry, 1.8750% divided by two, multiplied by my discount factor, and then I'm just going to be able to div uh, divide that by 1, 1 plus 0 0.8750 percent divided by 2, and that'll solve for me this discount factor. So that if I just go in and I'll just redo this one, right, I'll say 1 minus the coupon here divided by 2 multiplied by its discount factor and then I'll know to divide by 1 plus this coupon amount and you can see I get my discount factor. So the swap rates inform my discount factors collectively that's the discount function and then I can get to the spot rate. Well to get that I go to the definition of the spot rate which is different than the swap rate. And if I, let's say this time, let me go out to one and a half years. And I want to, so I want to solve for this spot rate. I'm at one and a half years. And I do have my 1.5 year discount factor here. Well, what's the definition of that? Well, the definition of my 1.5 year discount factor, right, this value right here, 0.9845, that means if I take it and I compound it forward at 1 plus the 1.5 year spot rate, compound it semi-annually, right? Then, right, then I need to say 1.5 times 2. We know how to do that. That's compounding the 1.5 year spot rate at 1.5 years. So that's uh, a 3 here raised to the third power. Um, Per the definition of this discount factor, I need to get a 1.0. So you can see the direct relationship between the spot rate and the discount factor allows me to solve for the 1.5 year spot rate. If I just take 1.0 divided by my discount factor at one and a half years, I need to take that quantity and raise it to 1 divided by 1.5 times 2. That's, that's going to end up being 1 third. And you can see then um, I'm going to subtract 1 and multiply that all by 2. So this is the specific version at 1.5 years, but this is the uh, this is just an instance of the general form that relates the discount factor to the spot rate because they are directly related necessarily. And so I'll just do that now. I'll take this value out and do that on my own. Right, I'll say 1 minus. I want to take that discount factor. I'm going to raise that quantity to the power of 1 divided by... 1.5 years times 2. I'm going to subtract 1 and then I'm going to take that whole quantity and multiply by 2 and I get the um, 1.044 spot to spot rate. Okay, how about the forward rate? Well, we go back to definitions here and for the forward rate we rely on the essential no arbitrage idea and that is that at the beginning, as of today, x ante, if I'm looking at a choice here on the left-hand side of, let's say, investing at the one-year uh, spot rate, right? So that would be 
1.0 times 2. I compound that forward. And then I roll that into uh, 1 plus the forward rate, right? So that's the forward rate from uh, beginning in one year, ending in one and a half years. Take that forward rate. And the exponent here would be 0 0.5 multiplied by 2 or just 1. So I'm just going to leave that as a 1. That's six months of compounding ends up being a 1 here. So what I have here at the beginning is a I can invest at six months at the spot rate compounded. Uh, I'm sorry. I can invest at one year at the one-year spot rate compounded over one year, then roll it over into the six-month forward. And the no arbitrage idea is that uh, my expectation as of today is that ought to equal the 18-month, right? Investing at the 18-month spot rate over the 18 months. So that allows me to say that my forward rate, and I'm just going to uh, simplify that to 1 plus f divided by 2, um, is going to equal, right, this value here divided by this value here. Well, notice when we divide by this here, 1 divided by this here, what we are getting is the one-year discount factor. So by really elegant simplification, this is the one-year discount factor divided by the 1.5-year discount factor. And then you can see we, uh, to isolate on the forward rate, we divide by 1 and multiply by 2. But uh, in an elegant way, then, the discount factors, we can use them as well to extract the forward rates quite easily, really. So... Now I'll do that here. If I, I'm going to solve for the one and a half year discount factor, right? I, uh, I'm sorry, I'm solving for the one and a half year uh, forward rate. I take the one year discount factor, divide by the 1.5 year discount factor, minus one, multiply the quantity by two, and I get the forward rate. Okay, so finally, what about the par rate, which I don't have on here? Where is that? Well, what's the definition of our par rate? I'll use Tuckman's notation here. The par rate is the coupon rate that prices the bond to par. And so let's say I want to solve for the two and a half year, 2.5 year par rate, right? Then the that is given by the coupon rate. That's Tuckman's notation at two and a half years, uh, paid semi-annually. So, um, if I multiply that by the annuity factor, which is the sum of the discount factors, then what I'm doing is I'm retrieving here the present value of that stream of coupons, which means I only need to remember to add the final uh, par, the final par, which is in this case is I can use the 2.5 year discount factor. Well, the definition of the par rate is that it's the coupon rate here that solves, that implies this here is equal to one. Now again, again, it's the coupon rate that prices the bond to par, which is $100. So this formula here, which you'll see in Tuckman, implicitly cancels the $100 out, right? Because we have a coupon rate as a percent divided by two. So we, mul we would multiply that by 100, multiply by the annuity factor here. That would give us the present value in dollar terms. Also, the $100 principle, this gets this discount factor gets multiplied by $100 to give us the present value of that final par. So $100 times this term plus $100 times this term actually gives us the $100 here. So you can see implicitly, is a, the, each of the terms $100, that just gets canceled out. So it's there implicitly. But now we have what we need to infer the 2.5 year par rate, right? You can see how, again, it's going to be equal to 1.0. I'm going to subtract my 2.5 year discount factor. I'm going to divide that by my annuity factor and multiply that by 2. 
Okay, so I'm going to go do that right here. I'm going to say 1 minus my 2.5 year discount factor. I'm going to divide that by the annuity factor, which is the sum of all of the discount factors here. And I'm going to multiply that by 2. And notice I got the swap rate. And that's what I expected because as Tuckman says, the swap rate is a par rate. So we've come full circle. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to anchor this G7. Yep, that's my G7 there. I'm going to anchor that so I can copy it back and confirm that we get a match uh, for the whole series here. Par rates are swap rates. So I hope that's helpful, bringing them all together in coordination. Remember, we only really had one input here, the swap rate curve. And from the swap rate curve, we were able to immediately infer the discount function, that is the set of discount factors, the implied spot rate curve, which we call the zero rate curve, the implied forward rate curve, and we're just reminded that that swap rate curve that we observe is also a par yield curve as well. So if you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel and you'll see the next one or you'll get notified. Thank you.